The following stream contains mature content and subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to McStabber Studios Broken Tales, A Tale Within a Tale. Tonight, I am the narrator for this stream, Shanky McStabber. And I am Mama McStabber, and I'll be playing Sherazad, the Weaver of Tales. And I'm Kelly Salvo, and I'll be playing The Immortal. I'm House, and I play the knight with a hundred heads. I'm Emmy Lou Who. I'm playing Baba Yaga, the child witch. And you're muted. You pulled a bin. You pulled a bin. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Maddox, and I play the astonishing Pied Piper without a name. The year is 1780. The fairy tales that once... We're almost doomed to nothingness, doomed to be forgotten. We're saved by a child. A child who had the imagination and wanted to see it continue. And when the fairy tale king came to the child and said, you have saved us and offered to grant him one reward, the child only said, I would give new life to the rogues. A chance for redemption for every character who's been relegated to the role of villain for centuries. But if you have no more villains, someone has to take the place. So the roles were reversed. Many of the villains now work for the Order, a secret group who tried to put a stop to the fairy tales gone wrong in the world around them. While the heroes of myth and lore are now the villains. I want to warn people tonight, we're doing a fairy tale of, of darkness. This is not going to be a Disney fairy tale. And tonight, our story opens with a rude awakening. You're in a strange inn, which is certainly not the place where you fell asleep last night. The bedroom door is thrown open violently, and a tall, thin man in a soldier's uniform asks you to follow him out of the room. Apparently, the king and queen of this strange place await you to give you an audience. In the midst of a field of withered flowers and rotting crops stands a mighty castle. The walls are covered with ivy, and the roofs, once gilded, seem blackened and burned by the rays of a dying, red, and menacing sun. You don't know how you came here. But this guard escorts you directly on this gloomy autumn day. The sun hanging in the sky above you brings you to the castle. Where you're brought before the king and queen. King and queen who sit on their thrones. Staring sternly at you. But they do not speak. It is only a lean and hunched old man. Who does the talking. You have been brought here to help out. His Royal Majesty and Her Royal Majesty, you will be given gold and honors and anything you desire from the kingdom. But to do so, you must find and rescue Princess Tuvstar. She has fled into the forest beyond the castle and has not returned. I would step forward and say, I swear to you, I will find the princess and bring her back. Invoking an oath. Very good. The butler looks at you. He doesn't even bat an eye at the fact 
Here is a man with no head who stands before him. Their majesties, thank you. I will uh, sit and ponder for a moment and scroll through the memories in my head and try to remember if any of this sounds familiar or repetitive from something I've experienced before. Uh, you are already invoking your descriptor for this one. Uh, for this one. Hmm. I will say the odd part of scene you've dug through what you've seen in the past and your long history. You've never heard of this princess. You've never heard a castle described like this, which is odd because you've been and seen everything. It's almost as if this entire thing is conjured out of thin air. I've not seen this place before. But I would see more of it. When did the go. princess go missing? She went missing a little time ago. Unfortunately, I don't know if you've noticed yet. The sun hasn't set. The clouds have not moved. Your son appears dying. Everything is dying. That is unfortunate. Time is not moving forward. Is the princess the keeper of the time? She was just a princess. A little girl. A young majesty was a happy girl. Then why did she run off? I do not know. Hmm. Which direction did she go? Into the forest. In the, behind the castle. I will show you. And as the butler walks past and leaves the earshot of the king and queen, I have to tell you, there's a horrible curse upon this land. It started when she disappeared. And as much as their majesties would love to see their daughter back, I would be remiss in my duties if I did not point out that ultimately the most important thing is to save this land itself. Even if that requires extreme acts that might not be stomached by many. We shall see how the story unfolds. as you wish. And he takes you and the town that you're in, you've not been given a name. Not even been given a name of the kingdom. But the town that surrounds the castle, there are people going about their business, though they all look despondent. Not paying attention. Almost as if they're doing it by rote, not by thought. Past the town as you go that way, and he points to a dark black forest. That is where we've heard she has fled. I'll begin I striding will. towards the forest. As will I. I will yeah. take I will take a scarf and wrap it around my face. As to, in case we encounter her, I do not want to scare the princess. And then I will call upon my trusty horse or dog. <laughs> you 
you're going to call upon your horse. Oh, this will be interesting. And your horse. Out of nowhere in this castle, you hear the horse's hooves through the hallways. The butler looks around just in time to see the horse come around the corner. A large black steed. Not natural at all. Not in its eyes, not in its movement. Because though you hear the hooves clap on the, the stone, it is not touching the stone. It is riding slightly above it. Why have you summoned me now, knight? We are to enter a dark forest in search of a princess. And this is my problem, why? You are in fact my trusty horse, or dog. Well, what will I get out of it? What do you want? When we reach the forest, you shall not ride my back. The child when shall ride my back. Certainly. You hear that, little grandmother? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can walk. Oh, but wouldn't you like to ride a horse as magnificent as me? All right. And though the butler was startled at first, he's not batting an eye at the fact that not only does this horse appear now, but is talking. I will lead you to the gates. And he takes you to the gates of the castle. They're covered in vines. They don't look like they're doing well. Through, follow this road, it hooks around the castle, and you should be able to go to the back and find your way to the forest. Safe journey. And remember what I said. So you all we did not catch. Go ahead. We did not catch your name. I am the butler. Even servants have names. If, I am the butler. I want to see if they have something of the princesses that I can take with us. Okay. What are you going to use to do that? Um, can I use my descriptor? I'm very skilled at, no, wait, that's not gonna, well, yeah, manipulating people. Okay. You love manipulating people and often do it to amuse yourself. You're skilled at reading them. Yes, yes you can. That will give you three successes. Okay. It's a very simple scene to be, or simple uh, method to use it. Uh, I will say that the difficulty to try to convince him of that is one. He's only a butler. He looks stumped for a minute. Something of the princesses. We don't have anything else of her. She took it with her. How old is this princess? Fourteen summers. A fourteen-year-old girl strapped herself like a pack mule and left. Yes. She emptied out her room entirely. Yes. I'm nice. going to use you a descriptor. My words. As about, as about, I, I have a descriptor I think would apply in this situation. Okay. Okay. 
Go ahead. I know the delicate art of flattery, and I know how to best compliment others to make them feel good. I will not tolerate those who use violence. Okay. You're going to use word like honey, huh? Words like honey. Now, there's a couple ways you could use it. You can use it as a regular descriptor, or you can spend one of your only three story tokens that sure as the odd got gets to give you a keyword. I don't know if it's worth it for this one, but maybe that's not the right one. Hang on. Actually, I think instead I want to use the tail. Okay. Because I think I could learn an interesting story from this butler. And possibly get another token. Okay. Possibly. I know over a thousand stories, and from each one I draw a lesson with which to face dangers. <laughs> I'd do anything to learn a new story. Okay. So and She's going to tell a tale about a forgetful vizier. Advisor to a king, a sultan, and how one day he seemed to have just lost his memory. But then a cunning woman made him a brew of special tea, and he drank the tea, went to sleep, and woke up with all of his memories regained. So that will cost you one of your story tokens. Yes, it But you now have, what descriptor, what keyword are you going to use from that whole thing? Because it becomes a, a keyword you have for the rest of the game that can earn you experience and gain much. Forgetfulness. Very well. You now have forgetfulness that you can use at any point. If it matches what is going on, you will gain not only one experience, but two additional successes mm -hmm. to be used for it. And if I learn an interesting new story, I gain a story token. Yep. And we will see if this is an interesting new story, won't we? Mm -hmm. Very well. As you're standing there, a guy walks by. He's got a cart full of old hay. And he just stops just abruptly and looks at you all. Are you looking for the princess? Yes, we are. Oh, interesting. Um, we saw her a few days ago. She headed into the forest? She actually got on the back of a giant moose and rode into the forest. On a moose? That was when the world changed. Do you get many moose here? Well, sometimes. Interesting. I thought moose liked more mountainous areas. Well, there are moose here. Hmm. And she rode a rather large one. Right into the forest? Yes. That black forest over there that seems so full of trees that you can barely walk in it. Yes. She was wearing her crown and her dress and went right into the forest. Did she have, like, baskets or bags or anything on her? No, I don't recall she did. Interesting. Do you remember any of the princess's previous birthdays? The princess is 14 summers old. Do you remember any of the big gifts she was given for her birthdays? No, but I'm sure she got something. So you have forgotten. He just has a blank look. I ask Ordog, are you familiar with any giant moose? Moose. It's not a, a worthwhile steed who would lower themselves to ride a moose. So that's a no. 
Come now, if I'd seen a moose around here, I would have been laughing the whole time. I didn't know there was such a prejudice against moose. I apologize. Little more than beasts of burden. Not a real mount. Shall we venture into the forest? Yes. With irony. <laughs> uh, I look to our our small Baba Yaga. Do you need assistance up upon the horse, or can you manage? I can manage. And I'll pull myself up on the horse. The horse, unlike with you, knight with a hundred heads, the horse is obedient and pliant. When Baba Yaga mounts his back, and you can almost hear the horse laughing under its breath. So you are heading to the forest. Go ahead. Sherazina, set the scene. Or Sherazad, set the, set the scene, please. You travel past the meadow covered with withered flowers, small villages, hills, and streams. The closer you get to the wilderness and the great forest, the more the atmosphere changes. The woods before you are shrouded in perpetual darkness. Only the faintest light of the sun hanging just beyond the horizon reaches this place. But the sun never really rises, leaving this land enclosed in a twilight and ghostly hour. The creatures of the woods have gone mad, corrupted by the whispers in the grass. Mesmerized by the moon's reflections, they drink poisonous sap and foam that smells of sulfur. And as you step into the forest, is there any way you're going to try to go about finding where she is? Can I scry for her if I have a map and a crystal without having something of hers by using magic? Sure. Okay. So I'm going to go into my bag of magical ingredients and... I also have a pouch that has bigger objects. I'm going to pull out a map. I don't know where. I'm going to think that they gave us a map. Um, and then I have a crystal on a rope, and I'm going to start swinging it and try to scry for it. Okay. You don't need to roll for that. Uh, that will cost you two Soma okay. for this one. Now, so the players are aware, at any time you can declare you wish to take an interlude to rest, regain some wounds, and regain some soma. Though the story moves on, whether you're interluding or not. So you have to weigh that. But as you're dowsing over your map, the crystal settles over a clearing. There's a small pond marked right in that location. It's just marked the spring. That's it. But that's where this crystal settles. I have lived for centuries. I'm sure at some point in my life, I've lived in the woods and been around them a lot. I want to use the skills I picked up then to look for any pathways or trails that might lead in the right direction. Okay. Uh, that one I will have you I see. You've got a descriptor. That is a quite useful descriptor for you. This is your once per scene, but it this is your scene. Okay. Uh, so knowledge of the woods is your new is your added descriptor for this scene. You have mm -hmm. walked the paths of many woods and seen the things that live in it. Okay. I will put a difficulty on that one as well as three. So using your new descriptor, 
you don't need to make a roll unless you're trying for an exceptional success. Um, I will try. Okay. So right now you, because you have a descriptor that matches, gives you three. Uh, you can roll as many D6s as you wish. Remember if any of them come up with got one. two threes. You got two threes? Uh-huh. So those are all successes. If you'd rolled any ones, the entire thing would fail. Welcome to Broken Tales Gambling, everybody. <laughs> you can see the track that the moose went through, at least here at the entrance. It leads deeper into the place. Follow that trail. Okay. As you begin to move into the forest, I'm going to go with that new descriptor you added. You're being observed as you're moving through the forest. Two black ravens are moving and watching you everywhere you go. They are larger than normal ravens, no less. But they're watching you closely. Sherazina reaches under her shawl and takes out a strange egg. Looks at it. Looks at the ravens. Just holding on to this egg. It's the egg of a strange creature that was given to me as a gift by Sinbad, the traveler of a thousand seas. Ah, oh, very interesting. The ravens get a little closer. They move a tree closer, look down on both of you. And then one looks at the other. Oh, we don't eat eggs, do we? And the other one looks back. No, we like meat. I like birds that tell stories. Oh, we don't tell stories. It's quite interesting you're here, though. I am Hugin. This is Munin. What brings you, group of travelers, to this cursed land? We have a job. A job. Interesting. We don't do jobs like that. And what exactly is this job? As I recall, you do jobs, but for someone in particular. Oh, you mean Father Odin? Yes, we do. You are a knowledgeable sort. Not many in this place know of us. I've been many places. Huh. I find that interesting. Tell me, would you all mind if we followed you around a bit? So that you can collect thought and memory? Well, of course. We'd be free to give advice where we can. At what cost? Well, it does take a toll on your stamina when we're around. But it's not unbearable. And we are quite knowledgeable on many things. I will not speak for my companions, but I've already made a deal with an animal today, so count me out of this. You're welcome to ride along with me, if you wish. Okay, the immortal, so you're aware. Every scene, you must spend one Soma to feed the spirits of Hugin and Moonin. 
But in return, you can ask them once per scene for advice. And they will give you advice, though it may be cryptic. It will always be useful to what's happening. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And if you are attacked, you get one additional success for defense against a non-human creature. Because the blessing of all Father Odin lies upon you. I will say, if you deceive us, if you lead us astray, I may not have a head, and I pull out one of my finely made guns. My aim is impeccable. Oh, you'll find we don't do that. How else would we gather the knowledge that we are tasked to gather? So, who are you looking for in these woods? Princess. Ah, the princess. Very strange. You know she's no longer in these woods. Was she ever? Oh, yes. You'll have to find her steed. The moose. Yes. At them saying that she's no longer in the woods, I will actually turn and look at Baba Yaga. Did your ritual not point us to her? It should have. It pointed us to a lake. That may be not in the woods anymore. That's true. Hmm. Let us go further down the path. So you're going to follow the path. I like that. I like that. And that was uh, Hugan talking. Muni looks over. This should be interesting. I wonder what they'll see as they move forward. And as Do you they head, know... Do they know about the lake and what it is or where it is? They haven't said. They can't give all the answers and they won't give all the answers. As we're walking along, I'm going to pull out my pocket watch to see if it's working or if it's acting normally. Time is not moving on your watch. The hand is stopped. You hear it ticking. But the hands are not moving. Interesting. I will uh, go over to Sherazad and say, just so you're aware, and I say this loud enough, I'm not trying to hide it, but she's the first person I went to. I look at the watch. I even lean close to it to hear it tick. And she steps away. This place is removed from time. So it seems. She looks at Bobby Yoka. What sort of curse would do something like this? Can I use magic to try to figure that out? Sure. You can use magic. Uh, let's see. You have a sorceress of magical powers. You can go with that one. Um, I don't think your evil aura would f help with this one. So, um, well, you can use your normal will... descriptor. Your first one, I think, fits well for this. Your sorceress okay. of magical powers to allow you to do what you want. Okay. So you're going and to try I will to... use my knowledge to aid her how I can. Oh, that gives her an additional success. Yep. Once per scene is additional action, you give her an extra. If you can uh, narratively support them, how are you narratively supporting her spell? 
I am a ancient sorcerer who's got a lot of knowledge of magic that he's gained over time, and he can sit there and pass along additional information or advice as needed. You have seen time itself unfold before you. So that gives you one success. You're using a descriptor that gives you three on there. So you're at four now. Uh, the difficulty of this is going to be five. So you can okay. either spend one Soma or roll some dice. I will roll a dice. Okay. As many as and you wish. A three. a three? This one, three. That is enough. You've never heard directly of something like this. But if magic were used, it would not be that time was stopped, but the world itself is held in stasis. It is held at a single point. A single point where the past and present are immaterial anymore. Only the now remains. Okay. And I would relay that to the whole group. That fills me with much discomfort. I do have to wonder, we are in the presence of thought and memory. The Allfather would have plenty of power to do something like this. Oh, don't put the blame on him. This is not his way. Oh, but I think you know whose way it is. Well, yes, but that would deny you the journey. <laughs> and isn't the journey the most important part? Absolutely it is. The best stories come from good journeys. You can't skip ahead to the final chapter. No. We must plod through the tale. And as you're talking, you hear the clock of horse hooves coming down the path the moose took. And then suddenly in front of you is a saddled war horse, white as fresh snow, unmarked. Its fierce eyes lock upon you as it stands back, and it takes a few steps back, but it doesn't flee. I'll calmly approach the horse. Okay. This is going to be a an action test on you. Mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty is five to keep it from bolting. Uh, you did do knowledge of the forest. I... Mm -hmm. Horses are in the forest sometimes, your knowledge of the wildlife anyway. So I'll let you have that descriptor to count for three successes. Okay. And it's the first time you're using it. Correct? Yeah. Directly. So you'll have four. You're short one still. Mm, I will roll two. Is that is that an ability you had to assist, or are we all able to assist in some no, way? No, that's his. That's my okay. special ability. Gotcha. That's one of gotcha. that's my second gift. Yep. His gift is he's also a servant. And gotcha. he's mm -hmm. able to assist others. Six and two. Six and two. Pretty good. That works. That gives you a Should total of six one successes. Over. One over. As you get closer to the horse, at first it shies back because you don't appear to be a young man. You're deceptively old looking, though not in your movements or anything else. And then it steps forward and nuzzles its head towards you. And then backs up, takes a few steps, stops, and its head turns and watches you. And it takes a few more steps, and it stops and turns, and its head watches you again. I'll follow it. Does the whole group follow it? Yes. It leads you deeper into the forest until he takes you a little bit off the trail. And there you find a knight in full armor. Dead. He's got... I can't tell where the wounds came from. Something tore at him, damaged his armor, ripped into his body. As he lays there dead, 
His crest is still on his chest, though. Is the crest of a fox with two tails. And the horse just nudges the crest a few times and then looks back at the immortal. I'll walk over and check him. Check him. Maybe uh, gesture the knight to come with me. I would also like to step forward. I would join. He is dead. There is insects crawling in him. The, the decomposition. You smell decomposition. You smell the decay. But just because you smell it, you don't see it. He's decaying, but not. Whatever beast killed him, they chewed pieces of him. But even the blood isn't spilled everywhere. Time isn't moving here. This is just another aspect of that. And the horse again nudges the crest. Yeah, I want to look closer at the crest. Do I recognize it? No, you've never heard of a fox with two tails. That is an odd crest. Though it does tug at Sherazina's mind. Or Sherazad, sorry. Sherazad's mind. I'm so stuck on Dark Ages. Yeah, (laughs) Sherazad. And what does it tug at my mind? It is from a story that you of all people can't recall right now. Which is impossible. You recall all stories. However, because I have a certain keyword, I might be able to recall it if I try hard enough. I will let you roll. (laughs) <laughs> let's see here uh, it doesn't require one of your story tokens no I already have um, hang on it says during this sen- keyword of memory I know no it was a forget or forget I know mm-hmm. you get two additional successes and an XP you get one XP make a note mm-hmm. you lose that keyword yes I do but I can get, make a new one later makes your base successes five mm-hmm This knight was a gallant stort, always questing from one errand to another. Do I know from what house he hailed? No, but you know, he never fell. He never failed to complete his errands. This tale starts coming from Sherazad's lips. Of this night, of his eternal questing, how he always met his mark and delivered, never falling, never failing. He was an eternal knight. And then she looks at him. What could fell this? I'd like to use magic again. Of course. And try to see like the last um, minutes of his life and try to see if I can see what took him down or how. This is going to be extremely difficult. Okay. I'm going to. I'm going to set the difficulty at seven, the highest I can set. You start with three. Um, you were short four. Can I use my first descriptor again or only? That's the descriptor is what gave you the three. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, I'm going to spend a soma to get four. I will let you invoke your dark ego. 
Okay. For an extra success, you can do that. I will do that then. Though it scares the war horse off. Because okay. when your dark ego is unleashed, animals get scared. But that puts you already at four. So you're only short three. Is that with my one Soma? Yep. And no, you're short three. If you spend a Soma, now you're short two. Okay. Now you I'll only need to roll two, two dice. dice. Yep. Two fours. Very good. Very good. As you're invoking the magic and you all see her working her ritual. This child who is not a child. On her face is actually her eyes. She is this old grandmother. Yes, her eyes <laughs> have the wisdom of ages <laughs> that is not reflected in the rest of her. You see back as the horse was riding through with this knight on his back. He was looking for the princess. And he was set upon by a large creature, 10 feet tall. You've heard of these in fairy tales. You've never seen one personally, mainly because they avoid you. He was set upon by a troll. And though he, the knight wounded the troll, the wounds closed and the troll continued. Until the night fell. Can they all see that or just me? Only you. You have to, you can okay. relay it. So I'm going to relay that to them and I'm going to ask the immortal, have you ever seen anything like this before? <clears throat> so, not necessarily invoking my gift. Because I can only do that once per scene. Uh, You've seen trolls. Yeah. They eat anything they get hold of. Big, strong, regenerate. That's a troll. Yeah. Not under just a bridge. Seems like a standard, just seems like a standard troll. But it's weird that we have... Things from different stories from very different parts of the world all turning up here. The, the castle seems more central European. Hugen and Moonen are from the Norse lands. Questing knights, I recall, were from... English tales. From the Isles. Immune yes. and laughs. And look where all you are from. <laughs> are you all from the same places? Okay. The world has changed. Why do you think we go once more into the world? Dear narrator, Having sat and stewed in this stuck time that we're in, I would like to invoke a descriptor. Very well. What would you like to do? I am trying to recall if I have heard tale or even performed a tale at any point that has a similar effect. The descriptor being used is... As an artist, I have traveled to many places and I know many myths and legends. I'm hungry for knowledge and I'm fascinated by everything I don't know. Mm. So. That is an interesting descriptor. Okay. That gives you three. I will tell you. In this new world, the myths and legends aren't blocked. You've seen before overlapping of myths, though never to this extent. This is unnatural. But there is a logic behind it. 
all you've known that it always does have something behind it, don't it? Is the knight's crest like enameled onto the armor or is it on a tabard? It's a tabard. I was good. Yeah, I was going to approach it and kind of pull the immortal back who I know was going towards it. And I was going to check out the, the body more closely. The tabard can be easily removed. I would like that if you don't mind. Uh, of course. As you take the tabard from him. I will. I think right here, everybody, we're going to go to the break as they are in these black forests. And you're looking for, of all things, a moose. Or a princess, one or the other. Or both. Or both. <laughs> we will see everybody in 10 minutes. Please enjoy the break. Welcome back, everybody. Before the break, well, this was a very interesting fairy tale. So far, they woke somewhere they didn't even know where they were. Don't know how they got there. But they woke and had to meet with the king and queen, a king and queen who not only did not speak, but it seems are caught in a land where time has stopped. Our narrator needs to change our view. Oh, probably do. <laughs> it happens. It <laughs> no, it's just me. Don't mind me. Look, everybody's seeing behind the screen. Look at that. You saw my mouse. Woo. <laughs> now that we're getting back to serious, I'll get the mouse pointer out of Maddox's nose. So. This land is caught where time is not moving, almost like it's caught between time. Even the pocket watch of the night with a hundred heads is not moving, though it is ticking. They are in search of a princess, a princess who apparently rode a moose into the forest. So they went into the forest, and there, the first thing they met was a pair of ravens. Hugin and Moonin, servants of the All-Father Odin. And moving further in, they were led by a horse to a dead knight. A dead knight, Shirazad, somehow knows about, but doesn't. She remembered bits of the tale, but not what tale it was from, which is, that shouldn't even be possible. For her, at least. Baba Yaga had scried the location of the princess. She is at a pond marked the spring here in the forest. Though, according to the ravens, she is not in the forest. But as we pick up, they're standing over the dead gallant knight with his tabard having been retrieved by Shirazad, a tabard that marks a fox with two tails. I'm looking at this tabard intensely. And she says aloud, it is very troublesome that I can't remember where his tale is from. She looks at Baba Yaga. I think we may be affected in this place. I have an idea. And I will take the wrappings off my face. Um, please forgive me for what I'm about to do. I will first lean over and whisper a little prayer over the dead knight. I will stand, draw my sword, and chop his head off. Head comes off cleanly. Still no blood. I will then take the head and affix it between my shoulders. And as you place the head on your shoulders, 
Your memory. His memories flashed to you. You had seen the king and queen. They had sent you to find their daughter to rescue her. You had come into this forest on yet another errand like you always have and always do. It is what defines you. And as you rode your trusted horse through the forest, a troll attacked you. Now you've faced many foes, but this one did what you felt shouldn't have been done. You had never been defeated, not in a hundred quests, not on a hundred battlefields. But this troll was too much for you. And the last thought you had had was, you can't have failed your quest. You never fail your quest. I see now why you apologized. I've seen Baba worse. Yaga's just going to giggle at it. It's not something I take pleasure in doing. As was told to us when we were sent out, grim things must be undertaken. I'm curious. You have his memories now? Flashes. Time doesn't pass here, and yet somehow things have changed for him. He was here, he is now dead. Is there any sense of time that has happened between his memories and yours? We, um, he seemed very confident in his abilities. This, he hadn't known failure. And at the end of it, it was a surprise to be felled. Do you remember, were there any else with him? There are five of us, and yet before there was only one? Do I recall any other companions? No. You you never had companions. You never needed companions. You were the gallant knight. Just just the horse and him. I don't know if we can get any more from this. Perhaps we should continue back to the path towards the I will, like I will keep I will keep the head for now in case something else is triggered, but Nothing else is coming to mind at the moment. If nothing else, it is good to look into eyes instead of a scarf. If you say so. Sherazad is just staring at him. <laughs> um, I will look at Ordog. It should be pretty simple for you. I mean, I've seen you do some incredible things. Would you mind digging a little grave for the remainder of his body? Now you want me to dig graves? Just a, just a small one. A sh it doesn't need to be that deep. You know, yes, I think I will dig him a grave. Only because... You know what? Here's a promise. When I die, you won't have to dig me one. Oh. I'm going to dig the grave solely because his horse is now free and doesn't have to bear that burden on his back anymore. And this horse, I think you're, you don't know how a horse can dig like this, but it's a magical horse because each drag of its hooves rents a furrow as deep all the way up to its uh, four, for a whole front up all the way up to its first uh, joint as it 
quickly digs in this ground a deep hole. Now, you're in the forest. You would expect to see insects in the ground. Bugs? None. Not a single bug. We're in a forest. Are there any roots? No. I will place the body into the grave. Okay. Anything anyone needs to do before I bury him? Has Baba Yaga ever seen anything that would make like bugs just like not be in the ground? Any kind of magic? Oh God, no. Okay. This is the insects go where the insects want. Very few, even the most powerful sorcerers, can't keep them away for long. This place seems unreal. Everything only goes skin deep. Sherazad will go to where the grave is, and from her bag of gifts that were given by adoring nobles who had been enthralled with the stories she told, she will take some small trinket out and place it on the body. And she will say, to carry with you since I have taken your tablet with your standard. And then she looks to the knight and nods her head and says, Is by chance your horse a demon? I take offense um, at that. What? <laughs> no, but for all the complaining that he does, he doesn't have to be here. He chooses to be here, so... I just kind of give him a sideway glance. I've never glance. seen a horse be able to dig like that. And the way it behaves, it's just, I, I was curious if he was a demon. I am not a demon, mistress. You could ask me. I could, but I don't know if you will give me a smart answer or not. That's fair. Indeed. He may not be a demon, but he's a pain in my ass sometimes. And I think he enjoys it. <laughs> I do. It is the only benefit of serving you. Again, you choose to be here. <clears throat> no accounting for taste, even in mine, I guess. Mm. Again, I think I'm you're just someone gonna who pet likes, the horse. He likes complaining. <laughs> I'm just going to start walking back towards the path because mm -hmm. we went a little ways off the path. And as you step onto the path, you can hear Something bubbling up ahead. It wasn't there before, but it is now. Bubbles popping is the best way to describe the sound. Immortal, correct me if I'm wrong, but that does not sound like a lake, does it? No. I... It's not water dropping, it's air moving through water. Very strange. Or perhaps something boiling. Hmm. Could it be a fountain? I would still think a fountain would sound like falling water. Narrator. Yes. Yes. Is there, is there any chance I could find a decent, like, sized rock? Oh, you're in the woods. It may not be roots under the ground, but there are rocks. I would like to place one at the head of the grave. Okay. And I will uh, take out my multicolored chalk and powder. And I'm going to write on the stone, a gallant knight quest fulfilled. Very well. I've made a note of that. And then catch up with the rest of them. Okay. I will kind of fall back. I won't and wait for the piper and just kind of put my hand on his shoulder and nod to him in appreciation. As you're moving forward, you see the dark pond ahead shortly after you've heard it. It's not very big. It's definitely not where the one that you saw with your dowsing, Baba Yaga. 
It's a different pond, very small, dark. There's foamy, dense bubbles that emerge from it. What does it smell like? It's hard to tell uh, because of the smell of a rotting corpse. There is a knight in armor. Another one. This one, the armor matches those you've seen at the castle. So they sent out their own people first. The dead knight is there. His eyes are white, puffy, like they're ready to burst. And in his hand is an ashwood spear with an iron point. I walk up to the lake. I want to see if it's water, pond. I want to see if it's water in that or some other liquid. So you've had a lot of travels, a lot of tales. You've seen many a swamp. This is swamp water, but not in a swamp. Is the knight's corpse near the pond, or is it a little ways away from it? It's propped against a tree. As you're getting closer, you notice the wounds on him. Something had rent his armor. Let me see, Pied Piper. Let's see if I want to look at your descriptors. What descriptors do you have? <sighs> The the first two probably wouldn't be as applicable, just from this player's opinion. Hmm. I will let you roll to determine. Uh, you don't get anything from your descriptors. So it's a challenge three, and you only have one success for no descriptors. You can okay. roll two dice, or you can throw a, a soma on it, or you can throw two somas on it. It's up to you. And I can roll any amount of dice, correct? Yes, you can, but if you get any ones, you have failed. I'll do four dice. Oh, you are brave. I like it. Seven, two, seven. Is this the same scene or is this a new scene? I'm counting the whole forest as one giant scene. Okay. Three threes and a six. Very good. Well done. Well done. His armor was damaged by moose horns. By the antlers of a moose. Looked like spear at first till you got closer and noticed the pattern. A moose hit him head on with his antler, with his big, huge rat. Stabbed him like spears. But the tip of this ashwood spear in his hand that has a iron tip is coated in blood. Dark. It should be dried. But it's not really. Oh, wunderbar. And I will pick up the spear. When you pick it up, for just an instant, the tip erupts into flame. <laughs> and then it goes... Does it get rid of the blood? Yep, but it goes back oh. out. But now you know that at any time while holding this spear, you can will it to light once again. Despite the fantastic item that I have just found. He's the disappointed. Piper, <laughs> the, the Piper looks pissed that he doesn't have the blood. <laughs> Dumped. Was he, turn... was he attacked by spears? No, he was attacked by the fucking moose. Now pull out your pipe and summon this moose then. <laughs> it, is, it is not so simple. Oh, come now. Yes, player Musik. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're not. Which, which of course, the, translates the, to uh, shit night. The, the, the two-tailed fox was a very punny guy. <laughs> Clearly. No, I, I wanted the blood on the spear for her and the Piper gestures to Baba Yaga to maybe find it. I'm going, I figured that would be easier. I would be Can remiss. Can I try to summon it? 
I would summon be the moose to us. One second here. I would be remiss as the storyteller if I didn't tell you, Pied Piper. Technically, you could invoke your dark ego. Mm hmm. And call a sound that can be heard by whomever you wish. Yes. The moose could hear you if you so choose to do so. Not fed dumps. And with a flare, he will throw over his shoulders his cloak of many colors. And by the time the cloak stops fluttering, the pipe is already to his lips. And you begin to sing a song. And tell a story at the same time, though you don't know where this story has come from. He was once a majestic being, the king of the woods and the wildlands. The name Scut was given to him by the rocks, the torrents, and the small streams. He had the ability to make great leaps through any obstacles. One day when the sun was bright, he ventured into the fields and flowers near the castle that humans built. There he met a young girl and was fascinated by this little creature with a white dress, long golden hair, and sparkling crown. And when she asked him to see the rest of the world, he couldn't refuse and put her on her back on his back and rode into the wilderness. You don't know and where the story came from. I will well, you guys will get the relayed information because you're listening to it. Did I just learn an interesting new story? Why, yes, I will let you have that. I get one story token, so I'm back up to three. Yep. As part of my dark ego ability, I am not doing the first effect because I don't want to hurt anyone here. <laughs> uh I'm going to use the alternative one and do a gentle melody. Okay. I'm going to ready myself to stand in the way if this thing comes charging out of the forest. I will also say that I would like to push an emotional state into the area as well. Okay, and what would that be? Fascination. What better way to draw in an animal than when it's curious? And everyone will, if I'm remembering right, yes. Everybody present will receive that descriptor for the current scene. You may, ha you may have to make a position check to affect opponents. As you're standing here, you hear it coming. As it moves through the trees, but the moose that steps into the clearing is not at all what you expected. It is a magnificent beast, or was. Standing its shoulders above even the immortal. But now it is rotting. Large worms crawling through its flesh. And as you're watching, the worms, as they leave his flesh, turn into ghostly moths that begin to flutter around his horns. And you can smell the stench of the rot even now. Oh, you magnificent beast, what has happened to you? I am dead, but I cannot die. What did this to you? A night. I'll turn and indicate the, uh, the night against the tree. Yes. I killed him. When he charged me. But he killed me as well. Where did you leave the princess? We must save her. 
I failed her. I took her to the pond in the middle of the woods, where all wishes may be fulfilled, but only if the wish is made by an innocent child. She wanted me to show it to her. So, as we journeyed, she traded both her crown and the dress for safe passage in these woods. And at the pond, she dove into the black water and disappeared and left only her reflection. Then the sky broke and everything froze in place here. Did she wish it? I do not know what she wished for. I only know that I had failed her. I tried to reach her in the pond, but I could not. It is not for me. It was a shame. She was a great, beautiful little girl. I can't believe I had showed her this. Is he talking about the pond in front of us, or no? Talking no, about the further sounds like one. the one that Baba Yaga had found. Had okay. found. It's a lake. Yeah. I don't know why I can't die. I am rotting. Part of me knows it is her. She keeps me alive. Trapped between these worlds. Then let us go find her. If you wish. If you wish to find her. You have to repeat her journey. You will have to. Retrieve her crown. Retrieve her dress. Only then will you be allowed to reach the pond. That spring. That damned place. No one of these woods can enter the pond. We are not of these woods. I can sense it. You are not trapped like the rest of us. But still affected. Caught between it all. You may be affected. And if you tarry too long... We may be trapped. You may be trapped... Like the rest of us. Where is this crown in distress? the crown you must move forward deeper into the swamps to a clearing of the swamps and for the dress you must go to a place even by the standards of this forest that is darker and full of even more evil shadows Shadows are no stranger to me. Those who have the items won't give them up easily. But the longer this world exists, the worse it gets. A face that we are convincing. Can you guide us to this crown, or are you to remain here? I can tell you how to find it. I can point it out. I can move through these forests. But if they see me, they will not deal with you. And as he's been talking to you, you've noticed a fog has started appearing around him. 
where I go, the fog comes. And they will see it. Sherazad will actually approach the moose. And the moths, as you get closer, they kind of flutter closer to you. And she reaches and strokes his, his snout, his muzzle. Says, we will do what we can to put you at peace. And as you're close, you notice there's fragments on his horns of a knight's cloak. It is a shame what has been done to you. That spear. And he looks over at the one held by the Pied Piper. He hit true with it. Why was he? Do you know why he attacked you? No. I assume the king and queen sent them into the forest to look for the princess. The townsperson told us she was seen riding you. Yes, I took her to the pond, to the spring. That place where a wish can be fulfilled. The knight probably thought if he killed you, he would be better to find the princess. Foolish of me. Some secrets of the forest should be, remain in the forest. Man is not for a princess to, to learn. What drew you to her? White dress, long golden hair. Such a... a yearning for life, for goodness, for a world with no pain. A world of no suffering. And instead, what she has caused is much suffering. I think if she knew it, she would come back. And Sherazad will step away. Give yourself grace. Mistakes are made by all. No. I cannot give myself grace. It is my fault. This is my fault. The blame lies on me, not on her. Of course not. Children are trusting by their nature. They follow any with a kind word. And the moths flutter around the lot of you before returning back to fly around his massive antlers. This fog that came rolling in shortly after him, does it feel cold or different from fog that we would have felt before? It stinks of rot. And you notice as the fog's rolled in, moths have begun to come out of nowhere to gather in the fog with him. Let us journey forward. I think we should allow him to rest here if he can point us in the right direction. I can tell you the way to go. If you follow the tracks you were following, these tracks, you will first come upon the swamp where the crown was given. The fairies of the glade have it. And if you continue the path, you will find where she gave up her dress. Let us go. The nymph of the forest has that. May you die in happier times.
troops. Save her. Do not worry about me. Let us go. As we move yes. forward, share Xenos, if that is the saddest story I have ever heard. Can Baba use magic to put the poor moose out of his misery? I will let you try. All right. Um, how many dice do I need? Uh, What's my difficulty? I will give you a difficulty of three on this one. And there's a reason for that. Okay. Do any of my other additional successes apply? It won't change it. Okay. I will roll three. Two, three, three. As you invoke your magic, normally your magic doesn't let you go for sudden death, but you can inflict wounds using your magic. And as the magic hits this former king of the forest, his body collapses, he hits the ground, and then it knits itself a little bit. And he stands once more and just shakes his head. I've tried. I am bound here, cursed to bear my guilt. Can I break the curse? Only she can. Only the princess. I have, Let us know. I have experience with this type of curse. I doubt there is anything we can do to permanently put him to rest besides ending the curse. Then let us not waste more time and go and get these items. Yes. And as you head further into the this black forest, the land where time has stopped, I'm actually going to end this episode right here. Are you sure? Because you have reached the halfway point <laughs> of your task. You still don't know how you got here. You don't even know where you are. But as Sherzad says, it's a sad tale being told. And I would like to thank my players and the viewers. If you want to catch the rest of the story, please be here at 8 p.m. next Friday. On Mama's birthday. On my birthday. <laughs> as we conclude what is happening here. <laughs> Trust me, there is a reason for all of this. A reason that shall be explained. In the end, like in all good stories, you won't know until we get to the final chapter. Now, will you? I will finish this tale tomorrow night. Or mm. next Friday night, actually. <laughs> Only if you are allowed to live, right? Thank you, everyone, for coming for this. I want to say uh, this is a very interesting system. I love the fact that it mixes not just one fairy tale, but all the fairy tales. Fairy tales and folk tales from around the world. Yep. But in this particular story, there's a reason for this. And it does make sense eventually. Mm -hmm. And the poor king of the woods. So sad. Forced to endure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. On our Discord, Emmy Lou Who. Yes. Thank First you. appearance on our stream. Thank you. As Baba Yaga, the child witch. Everyone else you've seen on our streams at least once before. But this was her first night to play with us. Uh, I'm glad you picked this story because this is some fucked up shit I'm doing. It's been fun. It is fun. Uh, please, everybody, join us on the Discord. If you wonder where we cast these shows from, this cast came from the Discord. I said I'm going to run Broken Tales this week and next week, 
and uh, people signed up, and we've got a cast. So if you're on our Discord, you might get a chance to play with us. It's all up to you. Uh, we also do Zoom Hangouts once in a while. Uh, I don't know if we're doing one this weekend. I don't know yet because it all depends on what's going on because, dear God, uh, it, we're getting into the season where I'm about to be very busy between auditions for Queen's Gambit, which is a new stream coming which this we fall. We just finished round one and just set up the the people who made it through round one into groups to start plotting and prepping for round two. Yep. And, <laughs> of course, we've also, you know, I've got to open my pool soon. Mm-hmm. And I've got to drill new holes in the concrete for the cover for next year because, you know, I got to do that. Oh, my God. It's spring cleaning sucks. Buy a house, they said. It'll be great, they said. No, it, there's a lot of downsides I'm not liking. <laughs> so, and we got a good community over there. Yes, we do. Uh, we got a good group of players and some good people over there. So please join us on the Discord. If you want to see back episodes of all our content, and trust me, uh, we have a lot of content. Y'all, we've been doing this for almost five years. And we've been putting out <laughs> weekly streams for almost five years straight. Yeah. Sometimes multiple times a week. <laughs> Oh yes, pull the pull the the thing. It's getting, get, hot. It's getting <laughs> trust me, I'm cooking here too. This is not breathable. Let me tell you. Dude, my cloak of many colors is turning me into a sweat piper. <laughs> <laughs> the sweat piper without uh, a name. Sometimes it's nice to play the character with the poor clothes that I don't have that many layers. <laughs> oh, you all suck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I think House suffered the most because the whole I first half threw, he had no face. I, I oh. literally threw the 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 <laughs> hijab and the shawl just over my sundress i wore to work today so yep yep yep, yep. so yeah you can't see my no face here but here's my no face yep <laughs> so seriously join us on the discord uh or join pop it over to youtube watch some videos we got so much content we've got pretty much whatever you're into we got covered unless it's D D or call of cthulhu because if you want those you go to ishvel's channel mm -hmm. that is where dr tiss our wonderful uh british uh our keeper the lore keeper we have she puts her stories there so check that out um if you want to see some amazing content creators we've got a list of friends check out our friends list the rpg table a junie in chat you'll see her actually as the werewolf storyteller ravner sarkhan he's our mage storyteller and of course mischievous red who's our resident troublemaker that we all love to play with because you know she's our resident troublemaker she plays changeling uh she plays uh in our vampire streams and mm -hmm. she's even, you know, uh, branching into some werewolf apparently for some of these audition rounds, which is ooh, mm -hmm. good stuff. Uh, you want to get some studio merch, check out our studio merch store, you know, do your thing. Uh, please sign in if you go to studio merch store, because there's some adult themed shit in there. Like can't wish a motherfucker would. That T that fucking counselor shirt is fucking epic. Yes, I am it is. Fucking proud of that. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you're aware, bits and donations, they go to the players, not to the studio. It's a way for you, the viewers, to give something to the players. But if you want to give to the studio, subscribe on Twitch. They're pimps. They take half. Uh, donate to the coffee or give money to the coffee. Buy mama a coffee, as she likes to say. They don't take half. And look, we know money's tight for everybody. Uh, if you want to support the studio in a free way, pop over to YouTube. Like a video, comment subscribe on a video, the video, subscribe to the channel. Like a video. If you're watching the videos and liking them, please just post a comment. It doesn't have to be much. <laughs> Emmy Lou Who is one we found from, from YouTube. YouTube. Yep. <laughs> or she found us, I should say. <laughs> so, yeah, just post a comment because what that does is it just boosts us, boosts us in the search algorithm so that when people are searching for content like ours, we come up near the top. Yep. Then you'll be easier to find us. Mm -hmm. We're still a small channel. I say that. We are. Yeah. But you know what? We love what we're doing. Yeah, we do. And we'll never make money doing it. I can tell you that for a fact. We ain't made a profit yet. And we're like a we mom would. and pop store of a streaming community. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're not the Walmart yet. We're not the Walmart. And we never will be. No. Nope. I don't want Let's that. Let's hope never. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. 
<laughs> and now I'll turn it over to my lovely wife so she can give us our schedule. All right. So coming up over the next week, yeah, we got, uh, is Tiss streaming? Oh, yes. She is streaming okay, tomorrow. So, she gave so, me an episode name today, which is oh, shocking. Wow, that is shocking. Usually it's the day of maybe an hour before. Yeah, because okay. Urini's not here to tell us for sure they're streaming <laughs> because he's probably drunk right now on his birthday. No, for real. Today is your Annie, not your Audi's birthday. He better be fucking celebrating, okay? <laughs> But he told me he can't get too shit face drunk tonight because he's got to play Call of Cthulhu That's tomorrow. That's right. That's right. He can't be playing. Well, no, he could be playing hungover. Yeah, he doesn't like to. <laughs> it impacts his role play. So we have Call of Cthulhu 7E, London Esoteric Society, run by the amazing European GM, Dr. Tiss. She and her group of investigators do all the sus-ass shit they shouldn't be doing. They're reading all the books that should be burned and summoning elder beings that really should not be summoned and doing all kinds of hinky shit. So join them at 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow as everything is your any nut your outie yep. Uh, sanity is a question that they answer no on in that stream. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, we don't have anything else during the week up until Friday. That is where we will be finishing this story, Broken Tales, on Friday, May 24th, Mama's birthday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And Mama will likely be drinking while we're playing. <laughs> I, I have to say, we're not even finished the adventure, but this is a game I will revisit. Yeah, it's good. I love the flexible system for the descriptors. It gives you so many different ways you can do anything. If you can figure out a reason how it applies, you can get away with it. And that mm -hmm. makes it the best kind of narrative stories out there. Mm -hmm. You know, if we handed these five characters to five different people, it would be a totally, totally different, different story. Table too. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yep. And since you can be a whole number of different stories, uh, fairy tale characters, and I oh. backed the the expansion that's supposed to be coming out next month. Hype! Seriously, it's a simple <laughs> system, but it works great. It's good for narrative style storytelling, like we're seeing tonight. So, uh, we'll be doing this again. We'll definitely do it next week for sure. So, uh, and as always, when I end these streams, I have to tell everybody, uh, mental health. It's not a joke. It's not a laughing matter. Please take mental health seriously. Please take the mental health of others seriously. Check in on those around you. Make sure they're okay. I know a lot of people are not okay. It doesn't matter what time of year. All year round, people are not okay. And sometimes it takes kind voice. Somebody just asking, are you okay, to be the lifeline they need to help them off that, that abyss that a lot of us feel we're in. And if you suffer from mental health issues like many of us do, myself included, I want you to reach out to your own support network. And I can understand that some of you out there don't feel you can because there's a stigma attached to mental health that really should not be there. There's nothing wrong with admitting you need help. Uh, but if you're not comfortable reaching out to your own support network, in chats, a list of numbers you can call or text 24 hour day, seven days a week. There will be a professional on the other end of the line who are there to help you to be that voice you need to be the light to try to get you out of the darkness. And if you're watching this on YouTube or you're not in the U.S. because I know we have a, not, a lot of non-U.S. viewers and a lot of YouTube viewers. Uh, you can go to findahelpline.com, put in your country of origin, and find out the support network in your country. Because, look, everybody, mental health is health, and it's very important. And though we like to tell our dark tales and our twisted tales with traumatized characters, we don't want traumatized people out there. We want you to get the help you need. It's very important. And now I'll turn it over to my lovely wife so she can give her portion of the outro. As the mind goes, the body goes. I'm a McStabber. I'm a registered nurse. And I'm going to tell you, make sure you're taking care of both. Okay? Please. If you're struggling with your mental health, please get that addressed. It's important. If you're struggling with your health, please get that addressed. It's important. Also, get vaccinated for things that you need to be vaccinated for. I know right now is not flu shot season, but when it comes around, make sure you get your annual flu shot, get your COVID boosters every fucking year because COVID is never going anywhere. It's a fucking virus. We haven't cured a single fucking virus yet as a human species. So please get your vac and vaccines. Also, <clears throat> mama voted this week in her state's primary. Y'all better be going out to fucking vote. OK, for real, for fucking real. It's important. Primaries are important because that's where you pick who gets on your fucking ballot. 
And it's unfortunate that enough people voted for a fucking shill on the primary that he still gets his fucking job, likely in November. I wanted to retire Steny Hoyer, but oh well. Motherfucker's I, been in office I since 81. I did my part to try to get him out. I admit I did not do the primary <laughs> like I should have, and that's on me. It's not on her. It's not on anyone but myself. The shame is I, mine. I am a woman of my word. If I tell you to go do something, I'm going to go do it too. So, <laughs> But I will not miss the election. You can bet that. So make sure you participate in your primaries if you still have yours pending or coming up. I do know soon there is going to be a special election in a certain area of uh, California, I believe around Bakersfield, to fill the seat that was vacated by um, the former Speaker of the House. And... Um, yeah, that's important for people to show the fuck up there. I know that's a notoriously red district, but please, if you happen to be a blue dot there, fucking show up, please. Um, yeah, and for real, make sure your registrations are still active because some states like to purge their voter rolls before an election. Um, and also make sure that your registration is still correct because sometimes they like to switch up parties on your registration. They did that to me. Yeah, they did. Um, but yeah, so so make sure that you not only are registered, but if you have registered before, that it's still valid and accurate. And participate in the general election. I know I talk politics, but mama's political as fuck. It's a thing. OK, it's a thing. And would Ted Cruz please stop sending me text saying to donate to him? I would sooner donate to a rock. On the gr just leave money on they the ground and give it to him. The state fucked up and switched you to Republican once. Yes, I know. <laughs> I would sooner take my money and set it on fire than give it to him. Yeah, Ted Cruz, Cancun Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I would sooner fornicate with the garbage literally, disposal. Literally, you know, I'm. I know how I vote. I vote according to my conscience. That's all I'm gonna ask y'all to do. But seriously. Just make sure you participate because it's so fucking important right now. Said with love. Yep. yep. And I do thank my players and the viewers. Uh, this is a fun story. And Mama still don't know why she's having to read the descriptions as we're going places, but we'll find out. It's kind of freaking me out. Yep. <laughs> so good night, everybody. See you next week or tomorrow for Call of Cthulhu. Pick one. Good night. Good night.